All right, welcome along to a very special edition, and I mean special in a great way, not in a, oh, you say special yeah, kind well, of way. Well, both ways, really. A little bit, a little bit both. Uh, we have the return of Wits Up TV, and I have actually been spending the last few days in Noosa with the lovely Belinda Granger, her hubby Justin Granger, and of course, their new baby to the family. Oh, yes. <laughs> so it is a very special edition. I just want to take this moment to say uh, we, we've taken a while to come back because uh, Garons has been very, very busy. I've been very, very busy. Um, Garons is still away at the moment, so that's why I thought, when in Noosa, why not chat to the mayor? Ex oh, the mayor the of Noosa. The mayor of Noosa. I like it, exactly right. <laughs> tell, us what, tell us what's been happening uh, in, the, in the world of BG. You, you've announced your retirement, but you're about to head away uh, to Cairns, then you're going overseas for a little while. What's, what's up? What's been happening? It's actually going to be the, the best year of my career because I'm actually doing the races and going to places that I want to go to because I yep. can. Yep. You know, last year I get to have the say. So every race that I've, I've organised to do, I've wanted to do it and I've loved it so far. And of course with Cairns 70.3 coming up, I adore that course. Mm. So was really looking forward to returning there. Just booked our tickets to Europe. Of course, going back to Spain, to Marbella, we have friends there, and this will be our third year, and absolutely love it. So, yep. it, But it's going to be weird this year. It's going to be the first time in 10 years of going to Europe that I'm actually going over for a month with no races. Whoa. So it, it, it's gonna, it feels nice because there's yep. no pressure. You know, I can just do the sessions I want to do and really enjoy them and not have to stress about, you know, races coming up and certain sessions that I need to do and yep. targets need to be met. So it's going to be interesting, but, yeah, good year ahead. Very Smash out some tappers and some oh, sangria. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm worried about. See, yeah. now that I don't have a race, my self control's not like not the best of the, at the best of times. So it could be quite interesting. Yeah, late nights and uh, tapas and wine and. Mm. But my favourite word in Spain, in yeah. Spanish, rabacus. Rabacus. What does it mean? Sail. So oh when, God! When the Spanish have a sale, they have a sale. Very oh, exciting. <laughs> Juzzy's hiding his credit cards yeah, as we speak. Exactly. <laughs> um, and and you just recently went to uh, to Basso seventy point three, mm. and in like history in the making, you've actually pulled up a little bit, a little oh, bit rough. I don't know. It's, a, it's like a rude word. Yeah. Injury. <laughs> You haven't been injured ever. Like you no. are known as like the Juris Duracell bunny. Like you no. never, never get injured. See, it's caught up with me. I think all this time boasting about how I never get injured, <laughs> never get sick. I got the double whammy. So I pulled up lame at the end of the run. Lame. First time ever had to be taken away in a wheelchair. <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> but I couldn't walk uh, and came back had an MRI and yeah I have got a partial tear of my plantar fascia so it's not the greatest injury to have yeah and it is one that I actually am going to have to take quite seriously <laughs> and which I have I haven't run since Busso yeah which is a little disastrous but you know I've been water running and thanks to Mel Halshield she's told me about you know running on the elliptical yeah so I've been doing a couple of pretty good sessions on that if she knows anything about nursing running injuries it's yeah. awesome. and <laughs> yep. you know what she's she's done quite a few of her races a triathlon races are uh, only running on the elliptical and it mm. doesn't seem to have dampened her running at all so <sighs> she goes I'm hoping right. a little bit of that rubs off on me yeah but you know what it's probably in hindsight you've always got to take the good from the bad and and you know I, I did need a little bit of a break um so this is a forced break but I actually woke up on the Monday once I got back with a terrible head cold as well so I thought double whammy injured yeah. and sick but I get it all I've done with so yep. I can put that to bed and look obviously I'm going to be going into can 70.3 with very limited or no running training but my swim and bike are fine and you know as long as I keep up the water running and the elliptical trainer I think yeah. I'll be okay I'll get through it but you know one one day at a time it's yeah. definitely getting better but it's yeah one day at a time one day at oh, a time. Man. oh I can't believe I'm saying I this know. is so not me it's like I know. Oh, but anyway anyway oh, had to happen one, had to happen one day and, and since you've you've actually formally announced the retirement, you're feeling pretty good about it. You're mm. excited about the the next phase of your life, Mother, yeah. motherhood with, Mother, with motherhood with Mackie. <laughs> and we are we are actually going to get another puppy at the end of the year, so another little uh, cocker spaniel, yeah, black one. So yep. then we really will be a family. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Look, I definitely am ready to retire um, after doing Challenge Taiwan. That was I definitely feel quite satisfied having that as my last <laughs> Ironman distance race, no yep. doubt. Um, Announcing my full retirement from all racing, it's hard because, you know, mm. I still find half Ironman distance so not easy to do, but so mentally easy to prepare for. Of course, it's still yeah. hard. 
Um, so that's going to be interesting, but I think I've got about 10 left <laughs> of chocolate in yeah. 10 before the end of the year. So yeah, yeah. I reckon by the time December rolls around and I do Challenge Phuket, yeah. I'll be ready to say that's it. I'm, I'm quite happy to end it there. Oh, man. So that'll be good. It'll be good. I have to get to Phuket. All I've heard about <clears throat> is the after party, and I, I need to witness that. And it's going to be even bigger this year. If, that's, oh, if it is humanly possible to be bigger, it will be this year because it's. I've told Roman, one of the organisers, that it's my retirement party too. Yeah. So you yeah. oh, better make it good. <laughs> uh, all right, enough about you. Yeah, Stop talking. Enough about me, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, let's move on to what's been happening around the globe. It's mm. more happening on the other other side of the uh, the hemisphere yep. uh, to Australia because we're sort of entering our off season. Although mm. there's not really an off season so not much anymore. these days. No, that's right. Um, Twelve months a year. Yeah, exactly. Um, but let, let's go to Ironman Lanzarote possibly one of the toughest mm, races um, out there. Um, Lucy Gossage took the title, mm. um, but it was welcoming back Corinne Abraham as well. So it was great to great. see her out there um, uh, with a 306 <laughs> marathon. So tell me, looking at, at these kind of women and what they're doing um, at these kind of races, how do you see, you know, your Lucy Gossages and your Corinne Abraham, sorry, Susan Black came second as well, how they will go peaking at this sort of time of year and then wanting to peak again in Kona. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, who of these girls actually want to go mm. to Kona. I'm assuming most of them do. And I love having these new, newer names coming into Kona because they're going to come in with no pressure. Yep. There's going to be no media. Yeah. Um, and that's the best way to go into Kona. Yeah, yeah. You know, going into Kona with a lot of media pressure, with a lot of um, commitments, it's tough. Uh, so these girls are going to go in with nothing and a lot of the other girls, bigger names, are not going to know who they are or what they look like. Um, a little bit like the Chrissy Wellington when she first yeah. came on the scene. And, you know, they're going to they're do really well. They're great athletes. And Lucy Gossage is, is getting better every year. Mm. Uh, great to see Corinne back. I mean, obviously, yep. we knew she wasn't a flash in the pan. You don't pull out times like she did in Melbourne no. and no. Uh, disappear. She did have a major injury, and it's mm. good to see. And, you know, in, in hindsight, it's, it's been a little bit of a blessing, although I'm, I'm sure she'll disagree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you look at her swim. Yeah, yeah. I mean, true. I expected her to yep. swim way over an hour yep. in, in um, Lanzarote, and she swam a 56, yeah, I yeah. think, and yeah, 50s, was yep. not that far behind the top girls. So mm. that's impressive, and good on her for taking a lousy situation yeah. and just saying, okay, I'm just going to spend the next year in the pool. And it's, yep. it's, it's perfect yep. because realistically, for her to have any chance of doing well in Kona, she had to improve her swim yep. a lot. Yep. And it looks like she has improved it a lot. So. Look out, and, and her run time, 3.06, that's yeah. up off a stinking hard bike ride, yeah. which Lance Ruddy is, was yeah. brilliant. It yeah, just yeah. shows how strong she is, and that's what you need in Kona. So, yeah, I look. I hope Corinne is aiming for Kona, and I, I hope yeah. that she gets there fit and healthy. Um, she's still got plenty of time to improve her, her bike and run. Mm. And, yeah, she could be... She could have a really good day, along with these other girls as well. Yep, yep. Well, she's actually uh, heading to Frankfurt oh, okay. uh, to get a few okay. more points yep. there because she won't have enough from Lance no, Ruddy, but, no. yeah. Uh, and then head Perfect. on over to, to Kona. But what's um, interesting as well is like the rise of this Uplace BMC mm. team as well. Like, I guess someone like Corinne who, you know, she had such a high and then unfortunately that low with the injury, she, she ended up with a broken sacrum, which mm. is, yeah, Horrible. long, long, long time. That's a lot of sitting on what, donuts, donuts and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> Not nice. Yeah, yeah. But then to be picked up by a team, to be able to nurse her back and yeah. not, not nurse obviously her. obviously saw her potential, knew yes, it was there, exactly. which I yeah. love that they've yeah. done that. Yeah, uh, doesn't happen that often in our sport. And yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, look, I, I, I'm hoping that these teams are the way of the future for our mm. sport because it's certainly going to make them the sport so much more professional. Yeah, and and it gives girls like you think about Corinne. She just started to make the big time wins Melbourne, then gets an injury. Mm. Where's her income? Yeah, exactly. She can't race for a year. Yep. For a lot of pros, that's it. Yeah, You're yeah. Finished. Yep. But you know, this team's picked her up, and now when things like that happen, they've got that security there, which is such a huge pressure off your shoulders. Yeah. And she can concentrate on things like her swimming, mm -hmm. and and not worry about well, where's the next paycheck coming from? Yeah. And obviously, it's working. Mm. And obviously, the camaraderie and the training camps they've had, the camaraderie is amazing. The training camps they've had are working because I think the girls and the guys have podiumed in every mm. race they've done so yeah, yeah. far this year. Yep, so it's right. it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's great yeah. for the sport. I completely Definitely. agree. Um, I want to jump over to Ironman Texas quickly. I say quickly because we're actually going to catch up with Kelly Williamson mm. later on in the show, uh, who won uh, in her f uh, won her first Ironman. Ironman so, yep. And great to see her back from a bit of an injury that you know a little bit about as well, which we will come to that back to that. But 
massive lineup. I think there was 31 women on the start list. <laughs> um, Kelly Williamson going sub nine with a 2:54:46 <laughs> marathon. Yeah, it's amazing. Julia Ga Gaya, Gaya, Ga Gaya, and Amber. I'm sorry, Amber Fer Ferreira. I, I hope think that's I got how you that say right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So I mean. Like you said, I mean, Kelly's not new to the sport, mm. but her first Ironman win, yes. like you said before, it's great seeing these new names sort of coming back up to the top yeah. and, you know, how they're going to play, play it all out in, in Kona. And like I said, Kelly's not new. No, but, but, she's, but she had her, a pretty rotten last year. She yeah, didn't do exactly. much of anything last year, but yeah. obviously before she got her injury diagnosed. And, it, you know, it's the same sort of thing with Corinne, had a rotten, mm. well, non-existent last year almost, yeah. has come back, you know, with a vengeance. And yeah, and then I know we're going to talk, discuss later on Camilla Pedersen, another one. Mm. You know, horrible, horrific yeah. injury last year and has come back with an absolute vengeance. So yeah. I love it. I love seeing these girls mm. get back up on the horse and even better than where they were when they left off. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's cool. yeah. Maybe tough, slowing, tough them, slowing them down a little bit so it's a good thing they can yeah, sit back and then. And if you actually unleash. remember the year that Leander Cave won Kona yep. a couple, two years ago, She'd had a pretty lousy year too, leading yeah, up to 70.3 Worlds. She'd been injured mm. for the whole first half of the year. I remember she was training here in Noosa and I went for a ride with her one day and she really wasn't riding well. Yeah. So for her to then, I think having that time off at the beginning of the year was actually good for her for the end of the year. Yeah. She came back flying. Well, Vegas and Kona. Yeah. The double. I, the only Craziness. one person who's done that, or two I'm, now, but uh, yeah. Crowley was the other person yeah, who's ever done Yeah, I don't think we'll it. see another... Yeah, girl do that. It's just phenomenal. Well, that's interesting. I don't think we will either because it seems now you you have to focus on Kona. Like you other. cannot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you, like we at the moment we're seeing you, Caroline Steffens, who normally races a lot. Everything. Possible. Is really pulling it back. Yep. Meredith Kessler so. is doing a similar sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you you can't. No. You know, have... And especially it? with yeah. a lot of the short course ITU stepping it up to 70.3 where yeah. they're just changing the game of 70.3. Yeah. It's now, it is a sprint. Mm. It is 100% go for it. And so these Ironman athletes know that if they're not on top of their game, then it's 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 just too hard to compete against these short course yeah, guys, absolutely. So, guys and girls. So yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, super, super But exciting. yeah, Kelly, yeah, she's amazing. She had, was... Fantastic to see her take the win because mm. and to run that time that's that's up there with the best in the world without oh, a doubt. Absolutely, I don't care what the run course is. Yeah, two fifty four yep. is a legit run time. Is one of the top top five in the world. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah, um, and I mean. We've always been keeping an eye on her run mm. for sure over everything. That's um, when she gets that bike up yes. a little bit more exactly. as well. Far out. She will uh, she'll be and almost And we sort of know way. now why her bike wasn't what it was. Mm. I mean, obviously, she, yeah, she had the same, got diagnosed with the same injury I had quite a few years ago now, which is um, endofibrosis of the external iliac artery. It's so basically the thickening of the artery wall. <laughs> she wasn't getting enough oxygen to, mm. her, to her legs yeah. and lack of power. Yeah. So it... it wouldn't surprise me in the in the slightest if we see her riding up with the with the top girls now. She's been riding with one leg basically. Yeah, <laughs> so. far out. One massive right quad. Or what? I can't remember. I don't know what. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember what. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I don't yeah, think there's awesome. anything massive about Kelly Williams. No, she told me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of that, we're going to uh, have a chat to her right now. Welcome, Kelly, who has uh, just won an Ironman Texas, her first Ironman win. Has it all sunk in for you yet? Um, I don't think entirely, to be honest. I, um, I had so many doubts going into that race, uh, with the lead up of the year. I, yeah, I pulled out of Panama. Um, I went to Oceanside, I got 11th, which was not what I wanted. And then I actually had to DNF in Galveston, which is something I never do. I, I don't DNF. And so I, I did not know what to expect. Um, I think I knew deep within myself I had that performance in me, but to, to have it on the heels of such a rough start to the year was pretty shocking, you know? Um, so I I don't think it has sunk in. It definitely hadn't sunk in when I gave my uh, speech on Sunday because I'm pretty sure I was kind of like a, a bumbling idiot, which <laughs> sucks because I, I, I can do well with that. But um, it's definitely a little, it's, it's, it's just crazy. I mean, I've been doing this for 12 years and to, to see that after so long, you know, to come out with a performance like this, much less after 2013 with a lot of struggles was just um, kind of shocking, you know? So it's, it's starting to sink in, I would say. <laughs> you said before that uh, you didn't even realize the time until you actually hit that finishing line. So you, you weren't even checking your watch. So a sub nine hour as well, 
it must have blown you away when you actually crossed the line. It did, you know, and it, I did a 907 in 2011, and um, I know I'm a stronger athlete now, but the thing is, you can believe all day long in your head, like, I'm com- you know, I'm capable of that, you know, oh, yeah, I could do sub nine, but it's not until you actually do it that you believe it, and that it's, that it's a reality, you know, um, I'm not one of those people that's going to blow my mouth off and say, I can do this, I can do this, until I do, you know, and so, um, yeah, and not only was it sub nine, but it was an 854, you know, it's like I didn't even just creep in, like, when I saw it, I was like, wow, I really destroyed the nine-hour mark, so, yeah, it was, like you said, it wasn't until I, I crossed the finish and hugged my husband, and then it was like, holy cow, that's, you know, <laughs> that's pretty legit, so, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty amazing. I like that you used holy cow then. That was a nice restraint from a couple of other words you could have used then. <laughs> oh, yeah, which I usually do, so I'm trying to be a little filtered. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care whatsoever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, can, can you tell us a little bit about, because the injury that you had, um, Belinda Granger actually had, and it took a long time for her to get diagnosed. Um, mm-hmm. I know like last year was very tough with that injury. Was it the point that it, it took a long time for you to get diagnosed properly as well? I was very fortunate in that sense. Um, I had symptoms starting in, you know, Feb- February, March, um, pretty consistent symptoms. But it wasn't until I did rupture quasi in June that it it was so bad that I said, I've got to stop and we've got to figure this out. So I went straight to Memorial Herman, who's one of my sponsors, and reached out to them and said, hey, do you guys have a doctor I can talk to? And um, immediately he called me on the phone. We talked. I was there a week later. And he actually, aside from a slew of blood work um, to to eliminate any any sort of concern of overtraining, you know, fatigue, things like that, that was all good. His second idea was endofibrosis of the external iliac artery. So he basically put his finger on that within you know weeks of seeing me. Um, so I was very, very fortunate in that sense. And so then it was just a matter of um, a, you know, seeing a couple of different doctors and. The final diagnosis was in September when I had uh, the angiogram done after Vegas. So, you know, I went into Vegas fairly certain that I had this, yeah. but it still wasn't 100%, 100% sure. So, no, I mean, my, my time frame was symptomatic early in the year and a conclusive diagnosis by September So it and surgery. So yeah. um, it was, it was I, I was very fortunate that it was fairly quick. Yeah. And you seem to have come back. I mean, your swim and run are always, you know, spot on. And I'm not saying your bike's not, but you, you certainly know. Oh, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Your bike's shit, shit house. It's just. <laughs> but yeah. it, looks like you, it looks like you've been working on your bike as well. Like a 503 bike split is a very handy bike split as well. So it seems like everything's coming together really nicely. Yeah, it is. It is. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, I I'm, feel so blessed that I'm. I'm now it felt and they've been amazing Jim has been awesome like he's been wanting to talk and make sure everything feels good and so I feel really lucky that, that that's come together too but um yeah it's been it's but it's just always a work in progress you know and, and I see I see gains and then it's just it doesn't always come together on race day and with the issue I had um it was originally I was mostly symptomatic on the bike and then it got to the point last summer where I was very symptomatic running yeah so it's nice to see that after all this has, has happened, um, I'm, I feel pretty good on both. And, you know, again, I think it's, it's interesting because I train with power and my husband's pretty analytical with some of that stuff. And um, he's always just been baffled because he said, Kelly, your power to weight is, is really solid. But he's just seen me, you know, time-wise struggle and struggle and struggle in these races. So I put the work in, but maybe I just haven't had a setup or, you know, the, the full package where it's actually come together and translated to, to that speed. So yeah. um, we feel, yeah, it was validating. And, of course, I want to be under five hours, but not to the expense of, you know, um, affecting my run. Yeah. So I think it was a kind of a perfect setup. Yeah, oh, it was unreal. And with the 254 marathon, I'm pretty sure it's not affecting your run too much. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, yeah, I, um, and I dialed back the last maybe five, ten miles, I tried to sit up and stand up and move, you know, and try to really kind of start to prepare for the run, so it was encouraging to see I still, still, you know, managed that, even though I felt like I kind of dialed back at the end, so. That's awesome, so, moving on from here, um, 
that that's going to give you enough to get to to Kona in terms of an Iron Man. No, you, are you going to do another oh. Iron Man or just get some good seventy point three results? Um, so it, it puts me at thirty three hundred, and yeah, that's the big um, analysis point now. Yeah. Um, fairly certain it's about that five thousand mark that you need for the first cutoff. Yeah. So to be safe, um, so I'm actually going to probably turn around and do Coeur d'Alene. Um, okay. in about six, six weeks from Texas. And so that's what we had in our mind. And, and it's funny because in the race, I, as I was running and I passed, I moved into first and I was just, ah, oh, this is awesome. And then in the back of my mind, I was like, shit, Kelly, you win this. You have to do this all again in six weeks. <laughs> um, and I think the big factor for me was not just winning it, but if I put in a performance I thought could meant I could do well in Kona. I mean, that's my thing. I don't want to go to Kona. I've been there three times and been 15th, you know. Yeah. I don't want to go there and be 15th. Yeah, yeah. Um, but doing this told me I do have the capability to do well there, I think. And so the next step is to do Coeur d'Alene and, and try to get that early cutoff. Um, but then that means that basically I'm going to probably forfeit 70.3 worlds because I can't physically I can't do that and then bang out the 70.3 races to qualify for Tremblant and it's just too much I have too much respect for my body and um so the plan is Coeur d'Alene hope that I can top three there and that would put me in that 45 to 5,000 range and hope that's enough and if it's not then you know we got to kind of cross that bridge when we come to it yeah well, it's super, super exciting, and we wish you all the very best. It was great to see you get the win in your, let's call it your hometown. Why not? You yeah. just up the road, right? <laughs> um, no, no, okay. I like it. Yeah. Um, all, the, all the best in Coeur d'Alene, and, and we'll see you in, uh, in Kona for sure. Thank you, Steph. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I want to go back a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. to uh, Ironman Australia. Oh, I, want yeah. to, I want to talk to you about, um, well, what... She's kind of a training buddy every now and then. Yeah, Met Nell House she's short. Great, great um, girl. I mean, we haven't seen anything of what she can do yeah. over the Ironman distance or the Iron distance. I always love the chitter chatter post yeah. race. All, yeah, the, yeah. all the experts. No, I'm one of them. <laughs> Believe me, I'm no different. But all the experts on, on seeing this one race, looking at splits and thinking, well, she wasn't really that much chop. She didn't do yeah. anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> It's like, well, she only decided to do the race two or three weeks before. And yeah. that, you know, normally when people say that, you say, oh, <coughs> shit. But this is not. This is true. She, I was up here with her and she did say, I think I will just have a go. Yeah. And I had a long talk with her one day on the bike. and just Long said, talk? Long talk. Well, you know, a couple of hours. I think we did yeah. 180 that day, so it was a long talk. <laughs> and just basically said, if you're going to go with that attitude where you do just want to test the waters, just want to get through it, because her main focus still for this year is 70.3 yeah. worlds in Mont Tremblant. There's yeah. no doubt about that. So I said, you really need to pull the reins in and just do it as a long, hard training day. And she did, and that's what I love about Mel. She doesn't s do say one thing and do another. If she, yeah. that's what she's going to do, then yeah. that's what she does. Yeah. And she went through that race, and it was just a complete learning experience from, from beginning to end. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't perfect. And no, she didn't do anything out of this world, yeah. but don't think that that's all she's got for Iron yeah. Man because there's no way... Uh, she just wanted to validate because as a 70.3 yep. world champion all she needs to do is validate yep. and now she's got till the end of the you know till October to decide whether she's doing it it's not 100% mm. sure she's even going to do Kona yet yep. as I said her main focus from now is till then is 70.3 worlds yep. and then she'll make a decision so yes. good on her she wanted know? it there as an option right? exactly yep. exactly yep. and speaking of Ironman Australia as well big, big congrats to Lisa Marilyn oh, who had the brilliant. best race she had the race of the day yeah e yep. end of story end of story and I, I told her that I mean yep. I've known Lisa for years is way back when she first started racing pro when I was back in Sydney yeah and to watch her improve and to watch the dedication and it hasn't been easy you know mm, she's mm. she's a single mum bringing up a gorgeous boy and yeah. and it hasn't been easy for her and a lot of other people would have quit and given it up years ago but she's just stuck at it through the yeah. highs and lows and this year we see a new Lisa I mean yeah. she looks incredible Far out. and she's yeah, and it showed in a race it was a brilliant yeah. race and I really thought once Melissa caught her on the run that that would mentally just be the end of Lisa yeah but you know she just st stuck at her yeah definitely and I think what was the difference at the end a couple of minutes yeah it, was, it wasn't it wasn't it was crazy yeah. a very very impressive race from Lisa yeah we we're we're gonna see some big some bigger things yes, from her I think, I think so. yeah, yeah she's definitely you forget how, she's still young yeah you know, forget it. 
I think because I've known her for so long that she's, you know, an older, older than what she is, but she's not. She's got plenty of great racing years left in her. Definitely. Well, everyone's young compared to you. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> this is true. Thanks for reminding me, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. Are you kidding Decrepit me right now? and injured. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh you're, well. you're asking me to leave now, aren't you? Yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah, thank God you are leaving this afternoon. I've had about enough. Yeah. Four days. I am hard Jeez, work. It's been tough. Let me tell you, people, it's been tough. Four <laughs> days with this one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, yeah, so yeah, she yeah. who's had seven coffees today already. <laughs> <laughs> I am a pro athlete. <laughs> what else is there to do? <laughs> That's what we do. Drink coffee all day and chat. That's right. Talk about the weather. <laughs> Oh, Which, by the way, funny. is magnificent. See, this, also, this is the weather you get when you live in Noosa. It, it has Beautiful. been pretty good. Yeah, it right. has been raining a bit, yeah, though. Off and on and off. Just, yeah. Well, that's for you. That yeah, was to right. make you feel at home. Yeah. Being from Melbourne. Yeah. I organised that rain. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm a nice girl. Speaking of just being in Noosa, I went for a run this morning and, uh, yeah, had a bit of a... Yeah. Amateur. A, a, mo a moment with a, Amateur. With a tree Amateur route. National Park girl. <laughs> I'm used to just the bitumen of Melbourne. I'm not used to all this kind of yeah. whining and Don't, stuff. We've, yeah, all, so we've all hit the dirt. Came a cropper. We've yeah. all hit the dirt. I know Hillary. I think the first time I took Hillary Biscay through the park, yeah. I think I took her through at dusk. So the lighting wasn't the greatest. And Hillary, everyone knows Hillary's run style. It's not as if she's got a high leg uh, lift. Yeah, she hit, she ate dirt that oh day too. Oh man, I'm pretty sure it was when I, I was looking has. at the surfers go past. Yeah, it wasn't concentrating. No, this is what happens. Anywho, anywho. Okay, mm. big announcement about a week or so ago. Challenge. Bahrain. Yeah. Huge. Very massive. Exciting. Talk us through that. Like, I think, I mean, obviously it's exciting because mm. there's a $500,000, no, Euro. Is it Euro? Five, it's a half a, is it Euro or US? Half a million US. We Ooh, will, we, we have to, we have to contend that. that. I don't actually even know. Yeah. All What's I know, is it's, a, having all I know is it's a bloody lot of money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously amazing, like a huge, huge, huge prize purse. But let's look at it from a few different angles. Why is it important to have a race like this for professional athletes? Well, I just think, you know, with unfortunately with the Rev Series in America mm. um, now becoming an amateur series, which I still think is fantastic yep. for all the up-and-comings, um, yep. we need a feeder system like that. Yep. Um, so just talk through that. Briefly, so you yeah. Know. So the Rev Three Series was, uh, and the guy that runs that is is an amazing and extremely generous person. And obviously, you know, he's had it for a few years now, and decided obviously for this next season that it would become more of a an open age group or yeah. what we call open yeah, in yeah. Australia. Yeah. Um, so still a chance for these top age groupers who are on the cusp, maybe, of, of turning. Uh, of becoming professional athletes, um, more a series for them and they can make some money. Whereas in the past, the Rev3 series has had a fantastic professional um, program mm -hmm. and the money's been amazing. Yeah. Um, and so obviously this year that's that's gone. So yeah, it's tough for some of the athletes there because I know a lot of, there were a lot of pro athletes that supported that series yeah. and that yeah. depended on that series to make some good money. Yeah. But you know, as, as I said before, take the, the good from the bad, it's going to be really great for those up and coming professional yeah. athletes or yeah. those wanting to make a career out of it so yep, it's good yep. but for that reason and uh, it's it's fantastic to have a race that's actually taking the professional series in, in challenge Bahrain yep. having a prize purse like that it's getting us up amongst the big big money yep. same as Meta Man yep. you know Meta Man has an amazing prize purse um, and that was out of the blue mm. uh, and just lucky that very generous the main sponsor is extremely generous and loves the sport of triathlon and it's the same with the Prince in yeah. Bahrain, he's obviously got the triathlon bug, which is so easy cool. to get. So cool. And yeah, he wants this race, and of course, he wants it bigger and better than any other race on the calendar. And yeah. that is what we're going to get. Yeah, it, it's going to be huge. Do you know of any like little thing, bits and pieces that, other than the prize money, mm. that are, that is going to make it sort of stand out? Well, I know that one of the reasons they chose the race date that they have is they didn't want it interfering with any other major championships. Yeah. So what that allows them to do is to get the best of the best. And I know what they would love more than anything is to get the greatest short course athletes mm -hmm. to go up against the greatest long course athletes. So, yeah. you know, you have your, your Javier Gomez, your Jan Fredino, Andy Potts. So people that excel at that half Ironman distance. Yeah. Uh, but then they also want the greatest long long distance Ironman distance races. Yeah. And as well as a lot of the ITU who are stepping it up. Mm. So like Emma Moffat. Yeah. Oh. Um, Svenja Baz Blaz I always get her last name wrong. Ba Svenja Baslin. Bla Baslin. 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 Svenja Baslin, yeah. who I think is brilliant at yeah. that half Ironman distance. Yeah. Um, you know, and Annabelle Luxford, even Lizzie Blatchford, but then yeah. get, you know, Carolyn Stefan, who's yeah, yeah. Obviously more well known for her Ironman distance racing, but is still a fantastic half Ironman distance yeah. race. So we want the best of the best, mm. girls and guys, to come together. 
yeah. with no other worries, no other races coming up. Yeah. Oh, the only issue is those. it's the end of the season, so there's yeah, going to be yeah. some athletes that are fried that just mentally think, oh, I'm out, I'm, yeah. I'm done, which does happen after Hawaii, but with a prize mm. purse like this, yeah. you can actually almost, well, you can, you can afford to take a break after Kona, yep. take a small break, yeah. mentally refresh, and yep. then come back for this race in December. Yeah. So I think it actually will work very, very well. And then with the ITU guys, I guess it... Their series again, is finished. Yeah, so it's the end of the series. Mm. Can they just hang on for a couple mm. more weeks? Um, again, I think they can allow themselves a little bit of a breather, a couple yeah. of weeks breather, yeah. and then come back. And it's it's half Ironman, so it's just those, you can specifically chain, chain for that distance. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be oh, it's going to be a great race. I don't know the prize money breakdown, yep. but I know it'll be great. It, it yeah. might be might be like sixty thousand for first and then ten for second. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be a decent breakdown because they yeah. want to get the best of the best there. Yeah. So it'll it, it and it's not just that; it's all the other packages that come along with it, like yeah. the accommodation. And even and age groupers, I've heard, yeah. they haven't told me specifically, but I know once I talk to them, we'll get to know them a bit better, but I know that it's going to be a very, very special race for age groupers as well. So oh, wow. They're going to go above and beyond what your normal age group race is. Yeah. I don't know what with, but Ooh, it, it should be pretty tuned. exciting. Yes. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right, I want, I want to go back, because uh, we sort of just brushed over it. Camilla Pedersen, um, that's how you pronounce her name? Pedersen or Pedersen? Yeah, Pedersen, yeah. yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, and you can actually check out witsup.com, we did do a couple of stories on her. She was um, in, in a bike riding accident. She mm. came around the corner. I think there's some other people on bikes Ch or kids Ch on bikes. Kids on bikes. Yeah. Oh, kids playing on the middle of the road, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, came off her bike and was in a very, very serious coma mm -hmm. for quite some time. Um, mm. Now, she's back. She's raced twice now since her comeback, won both times Season over two. the half <laughs> iron distance. Um, and you got a bit of a theory on Camilla and, and what you think she's capable of. And, oh, I think she's yeah. such a class athlete and I don't know any other athlete that could have bounced back like she yeah. has. Yeah. And I've never actually physically met Camilla, yeah. but you know, I've tweeted a few times um, to her because I just think what she's done is remarkable and s such a tough, tough cookie. And she's just such a well-rounded athlete over yeah. the half distance and the full distance, obviously yeah. winning Frankfurt last year. Yeah. I'm hoping, now. obviously I don't know, now, She's done two half I'm in distance races and won both of them convincingly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm hoping that she's she is on her way to go back to Frankfurt this year to defend her title and then obviously qualify for Kona, which mm. I would love to see because I really think that she's such an untapped well we haven't I haven't seen her in Kona in in this sort of yeah. condition that she's in, in in such an amazing such an amazing athlete. So I really want to see her in Kona this year and see what she can do against yeah. the big girls because she's one hundred percent one of the top players. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Oh, amazing. And, and apart from that, it's just such a great story. It just just yeah. shows perseverance and never, ever giving up on what, yeah. what you can do. And she's almost coming back a bigger and better athlete than what she was before the yeah. horrific, that horrific accident. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, cool. Amazing. And as I said, I haven't met her, but I can just tell she's a cool chick. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at that type of thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my yeah. goodness. But she's one girl in Kona this year, she's one girl that I want to go up and, and introduce myself and just yeah. shake a hand because I think she's amazing. amazing. Do you ever get like, you know, a bit fangirl? Oh, please. You should have been in the pool last week when the Commonwealth Games team oh. turned up. <laughs> I was, Justin was laughing his head off. He said I was like a five year old. I actually uh, was swimming last week with um, Michael Bowles. Michael Bowles, a swim coach from um, Brisbane, very, I think, the best swim coach in Australia. And he had a lot of his Commonwealth Games, boys and girls, up swimming yeah. for a, week camp, a week's camp. And there was one day, there, I think it was their second last day, and I was swimming beside them, and I actually got really starstruck. And I actually went up to them at the end of the pool and said, I'm sorry, but I just have to say, it's an honour to have you guys here at the pool. <laughs> You're so cute. And these girls are like half my, no, probably less than half my age, like, half my age, they're early 20s, yeah. 19 or whatever, and um, they just giggled and I'm sure they thought, who's this silly old duck next to us? <laughs> but very, very cool. And yes, uh, I do, I absolutely get starstruck and, and you know what, I love all sports. So yeah. if I met, you know, super duper tennis players or golfers or any any sport, I've caught, you know, yeah. I, when I met Jensen Button a couple of years ago in Cebu, <laughs> Justin had to walk away because he, <laughs> he said I was an absolute idiot. Just drooling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so, so yes, funny. I, def I definitely get starstruck. Oh, sure. I love it. And there's nothing it. wrong with that. I wish... It should be like that. I wish Australians were more like that. Yep. Stuart, sometimes the Australians are a little bit too cool, like, too cool for school. Yep. It's like, eh, I don't care who that is. Yeah. Just show it. Definitely. You know, it's, there's nothing, no, it's nothing wrong with that. It's cool. Yep. 
definitely, Love definitely. Um, one thing we did forget to talk about earlier mm. was the ITU uh, oh. series at the moment. Um, Gwen, I, do, I always want to say Jorgensen. Jorgensen. Oh, no. I just Gwen do. Jorgensen. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, maybe um, she was from Denmark. Jorgen. Yeah. She's no, American, she's so no. No. Anyway. But yeah, that doesn't matter. Uh, she won uh, at, um, where were they? Uh, Yokohama, Yokohama, sorry. Um, Japan. Now, if she's off the bike in the lead group, is it's it game over. over? Yeah. yeah. Although, a... remember we used to, this is where we've got to be careful, because remember yeah. we used to say that when, with Alistair, oh, if Alistair's up, oh, he's always off the bike in the lead, yeah. it's all over. No yeah, one can yeah. run with him. Yeah. The only ones that counted Jonathan Javier, but they're, they're always fighting for second. Yeah. And that was proven wrong last yeah, week yeah. in a big yeah. way. So, yeah. you know, you never say never, but at the moment, all things as they are, mm. if Gwen can get off the bike in the lead pack, it is going to be extremely yeah. hard for anyone to run the yeah. sort of times that she's running at the moment. Oh, absolutely. 33-43. Um, <laughs> the one before Cape Town, 32-46. Yes. This is getting down to the men's times. So it's yeah. crazy. Amazing. Do mm. you know the, the cutest thing uh, at the end of that race? And I'm, I'm so sorry, I'll mispronounce her name. The, the runner-up, the Japanese Ueda? woman, Ueda in her interview after the race she was just like with her little legs yeah <laughs> her tiny little legs compared compared to Gwen and I think she said um oh what did she say oh yes Gwen has really wrong regs wrong regs really wrong regs so cute oh it was yeah, awesome she's... and great to see the Japanese women going really well yeah, on their home turf yeah, as well I definitely. think second and fourth they got yeah um and just speaking of the ITU series Jodie Stimson absolute powerhouse at the yeah, moment she had a bit nice. of a tumble in transition on the weekend which yeah. cost her dearly but another she one who doesn't that. give up yeah no, she's yeah hard as nails and yeah. to see where you know she had a little bit of trouble before she joined Darren, you know, with changing coaches and not really knowing what she was wanting to do, where she was going, and she's just come back mm. as one of the greatest in the world. Yeah, what she's so doing now is It's amazing how, working. you know, sometimes a change, you just need that one change and that refocus. Yeah. Boom, unstoppable. Yeah. So, yeah, she had a bit of a tumble in T2, and I think she, she cut her foot quite badly. Yeah. So, to still get up and, and run with, obviously, blood all over her shoe and tough, tough yep. cookie. They are all yeah. tough as nails. Yeah. I love, I love women's racing yes, at the moment. It is right. awesome. It's pretty cool. Now we're going to wrap this up, but I'm going to put you on the spot. You don't even know what I'm going to ask you. Commonwealth mm. Games, who's going to gold? Oh. All right, now I'll make it a little bit easier. Podium. Podium. Moffy's going to podium. Yes, Because Moffy. Moffy's a cool chick. She's. And she's there's another cool. girl that I can't wait till she starts doing a few more half Ironman oh. distance races because yep. to me, she's the perfect build. Mm. Brilliant athlete, and yep. I think she can definitely. And I think she's the Mont Tremblant. Mont Tremblant. Can't World wait, so yep. she'll be brilliant at that distance. And again, yep. I'd love to see her in Challenge Bahrain at the end of the year because oh, <laughs> she's that'll be an amazing race as well. Yep. So I think Moffy on the podium. Um, I'd love to see her on the podium, and of course she's good enough. Yeah. But you can't go past the girls from Great Britain. Yeah. Yep. And not even Great Britain from Scotland. You know, yep. with I mean, I know Non's Non Stanford's a little injured at the moment, mm -hmm. but you know she can be ready to go then she's she's one of the only girls i know that could probably run with google and when she's fit could run with gwen yeah okay and she's yep. fantastic and still right. so young yeah but who's gonna win <laughs> uh, jody will be right up there yeah guarantee it yeah uh, helen jenkins okay yep. she's on the cut she's on, on her way back trail, yeah, yeah 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 and once she's 100 percent fit she's amazing yeah so hard because i keep forgetting what countries are in the Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you know, you oh, think, I don't I don't know, think it's, there's no Japan, there's no America. I was like, what about Gwen? Like, no, I'm just talking no, about her. No, yes, no, no, it's yeah. a Commonwealth Games, I always forget. All right, let, let's yeah. move on to uh, Montreblanc. Ooh, I'd say Melissa again. Yeah. I think the course is, so the only thing that won't suit Melissa is that the potential of it being cold. Yeah, okay. But she's a smart yeah. cookie and she'll rug up, she'll yep. know that. But I do know that, you know, she's tiny, there's nothing of her, so when it is cold, yep. it does hurt her. Yep. Um, she has taken your title of the best abs, oh, i got to say. Ridiculous. Crazy. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, Flashed her picture of her abs. Yeah, her and Corinne. Yeah. Very equal, even, uh, even yep. set up there. Yeah. Uh, but I still think Melissa will take it out. And it's hard because I'm not 100% sure what girls are actually going to turn up to... 7.3 yeah. worlds this year because I know a lot of the big Kona hitters. Mm, it's all changing now, it. isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So, yep. 
Well, even Heather Jackson is wanting to go to Kona as well. So, so you know, that's be interesting. change things. And I mean, I'm assuming she's still going to do 70.3 mm. Worlds like Melissa yeah. um, because she's just so good at it. Yeah. Uh, but then you can have a lot more short course girls stepping up, like yeah. you said, Emma yes. Moffat. And she yeah. might be alone there. There'll be other ITU girls. Sarah Haskins, I'm yeah. keen to see over see, the half distance. Yeah, I think would be the best for sure yeah. in yeah. that distance. She's just, she's the full package. Yeah. That girl. So, yeah. so oh, it could be a really good race this year. Yeah. Really good race. All right, Kona. Hit me. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This is, you know why Kona's hard for me? Because I've got so many girls that I know that have got the potential. Yeah. And then so many girls, other girls that I want to win because yep. they're just top chicks. Yeah. So in no particular order, <laughs> definitely. Get off the I, fence, man. Yeah, get off, off the, the fence. fence. I'm always sitting on the fence these days. What's wrong with me? I can't make a decision. <laughs> I'm just a dirty old fence sitter. That's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, Meredith Kessler. Beast at St George, by the way. Beast at everything. Oh like, my just God. does not have a weakness. Yep. And again, yeah, not doing a lot of racing leading mm. to Kona this year, which is fantastic. Carolyn Stefan was over last night for a barbecue. Looks the best I've ever seen a look. Yeah. Uh, and not just physically, but just mentally switched yeah. on again. Happy. Yep. Definitely yep. loving what she's doing. Uh, Marinda, of course, because <laughs> she's the greatest little runner I've ever seen and, yep. and, and because her swim and bike are so good these days as well, I mm -hmm. would never discount her. Yep. Rach, yep. Rachel Joycey. Joycey will be up there, Camilla will be up there, yep. uh, who else have I we should got? have had a list for you, I sorry know. there's so many. Who else? Any out new ones? <laughs> oh, I don't know, uh, Lizzie Blatchford, <laughs> yep. I mean third on Dabu so you know. Yeah. And who knows, she could be yeah, definitely up there in the, in the mix in the top five. Yeah. It's going to be a big main pack of yeah. the bike this year, for sure. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to, to see. Uh, it can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Because, yeah. you know, big main pack, you don't want to let it go. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes, you know, some girls stay in that pack that shouldn't, and then they pay the price on the, bike, on yeah. the run. Yeah. So, but I'm just glad that I, I missed Kona last year. I didn't go over, and I hated it. And so... I book my tickets going back this year, so yeah, I'm Fear out of missing course. out. Going horse, yep. screaming. And you'll so be part wait. of our Kona panel as well. Oh, of course. Which up while we're over there. Oh, I can't so wait. Plenty. See, I was jealous about that day, missing that day too. Yeah. <laughs> so no. We had so much fun. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. We rub it in. So rub much it fun. In. But, um, <laughs> no, I can't wait to attend this year. I, I love yeah. Kona, and yeah. I, I mean, I've loved racing it, and I love going there to watch it because it's just it's a spectacular race. Yeah. Spectacular. So it's going, going to, to be good. awesome. Very All right, awesome. we are going to wrap it up because if I let you keep talking, we'll just talk forever. Yeah, I'm going to miss my plane. That's a good point. Should probably spend a little bit of time with my husband and see. So we Who? just got married. Yeah, Who? I don't know. Hi, Brady. <laughs> Hashtag supporting dude. Yes. Thank you so much, no A, problem. for having me for the last few days, cooking for me, cleaning for me. Oh, you know, it's only you a know. day's work for me. It's just true. Perfect, really. You, well. No, not really. No. Where's Justin? Yeah, He's Justin is the him. perfect man. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You remember it. Anyway. Um, Thank you very much for joining us here today no as problem. well. Loved it. And we will be catching up with you very, very soon. Very soon. Thanks, okay. guys. Ciao.